Something is off about the tr first trailer for The Rings of Power, which is the new Lord of the Rings streaming show from Amazon. It's going to be on Amazon Prime Video this September. Something is just not quite right. Um, the, the, it's obviously going to be a hugely divisive show. You can tell this going in. Uh, anytime you take a beloved property like Lord of the Rings, you're going to meet with a lot of, you know, mixed views. And, and this this trailer is not really, it's not making me very hopeful for the outcome. Um, so there's a few things going on here. One, uh, it, it very much seems that to be the case that Amazon and the showrunners here are are casting this show with a, with a focus on diversity and representation. And don't get me wrong, I am all for diversity and representation, but only if it's done with some care to the source material. Um, you know, I say this, I've said this before in a sci-fi like Altered Carbon or something. It's very very understandable that you're gonna you're gonna have a lot of different you know racial. Uh, races represented in these cyberpunk futuristic cities because of course you know everyone from all over is mingling together but in historical fantasy settings there's usually some sort of uh i don't know attention to geography to regional differences that's important that you know in game of thrones they did a great job um you know pretty much westeros was europe essentially uh, and largely predominantly white, except for, you know, down in Sunspear and, and whatnot, where it's kind of like Spain and, you know, the Spanish were conquered by the Muslims and have darker skin because of all the, all that, you know, that, that occupation, uh, led to, um, the Game of Thrones still had some, you know, diversity it's just that the characters from a different region were darker skinned you know there was regional differences explained by geography and because you know in a medieval society there's not nearly as much commingling of cultures and races as there is today in the present or ideally hopefully in the future um so we've seen in shows like the wheel of time the witcher and now with lord of the rings this move to sort of making um you know to f focusing more on representation and having a more diverse cast and i again this is not an inherently bad thing, but it's being done in a way that feels very tokenistic, sort of a diversity ink attempt at, at more representation rather than something that feels organic and uh, true to the source material. For instance, in The Wheel of Time, much is made of the main character in the books in the, in, in the, in the, in the Eye of the World, which is the first season was based off of loosely. Uh, much is made of Rand Althor's hair. He has red hair. Nobody else in his village has red hair. He stands out like a sore thumb, and people are constantly suspecting that he is a, a, from a different stock than what he believes. Uh, and this works because, you know, there are... The people of Emmonsfield and the Two Rivers look largely the same as one another. They all have, you know, darker hair and... Uh, and he has this red hair and it's and that makes him stand out. Now, the problem with the show, of course, is that everyone looks no one looks the same in the two rivers. There's there's a wide range of racial backgrounds and everyone looks totally different. There's no way that anyone in that village is thinking to themselves, now that guy, he stands out. Because everyone looks different. See, and so that that's just this this sort of forced diversity is taking something interesting about the story. And, and and throwing it out just just to have more representation. Now, I still think you could have diversity in the Wheel of Time because you could have people from different regions look different from one another. You know, like the from the Borderlands, they, maybe they would look different than, than from the Two Rivers, right? There's lots of different kingdoms and regions in the fiction of the Wheel of Time, and you could absolutely have a great deal of racial diversity in that show at least make it make sense like Game of Thrones, which had racial diversity, but only be in, you know, from different regions. Um, now, Lord of the Rings, the same sort of thing could potentially work. You could have a whole tribe of elves who are black. Um, you know, you've got the different groups of elves, that, you know, the ones that live in Loth Lothlorien and there's elves that live in Mirkwood. And you could have, if you explained it somehow, and had these different, you know, racial markers and whatnot from different regions, that would be fine. 
But my problem with these shows is like in The Witcher, they just they just throw anybody can be any different skin color. There's no re explanation or region or anything like that. And yet they have this whole storyline about how the humans are rounding up the elves and putting them in concentration camps, basically. And they're like really, really, really bigoted towards the elves because of their pointy ears. Now, mind you, the elves look identical to humans in every other way. Elves can be any race, just like humans in, this, in, in The Witcher. So you have, you know, like white and black and Asian humans like oppressing white and black and Asian elves for their pointy ears, but nobody sees race at all. Everyone's just totally colorblind when it comes to skin color. This just seems like a lot, like you, you trade in, you, you say, okay, well, we're going to make our show more diverse and have more representation, but then you don't actually grapple with actual themes of racism or like how race actually factors into these worlds. And in some of these worlds, it really does matter. Like uh, I, I love the, the Joe Abercrombie's books. Race factored into those books. There's a character in the first trilogy who's from uh, uh, the, the Gurkle, Gurkish Gurkle Empire. I'm, I'm getting the names mixed up a little bit. She's dark skinned and she refers to everyone who is white as a pink. It's a derogatory reference to white people. Pinks, she calls them. It's kind of hilarious. Um, she, you know, there is that's 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 a bit of racism in this character, and then in, there's. In, in other points in these books, there's, you know, uh, focus on, there's a, there's a revolutionary storyline and the, a lot of the revolutionaries are f fervently anti-immigrant. Um, it's like a workers revolution and the immigrants are blamed for taking their jobs and being spies for the enemy and all these other things. So um, there is a, there is a, a, a strong thread of like dealing with these racial and cultural issues and how these different people uh you know get along don't get along how that works you know the the very the very the idea that you know immigrants from from this other land are darker skinned it plays a role in the story and how the story plays out and who you sympathize with and who you don't and who's a racist son of a bitch and who's you know if you just make everybody every race and you don't have any attention to those details then you're just never going to be able to actually grapple with that kind of thematic content you aren't going to be able to actually deal with like actual racial issues in these stories and that does a disservice i think to fantasy um and to historical fiction and all the rest like absolutely let's have more diversity let's have more diversity of stories let's have let's tell let's see more shows like kingdom with about a you know medieval uh South or medieval Korea uh, as a zombie apocalypse, like more stuff like that. Let's get some cool African fantasies made. I, you know, we can have more diversity in all of these stories, but we should still pay attention to to the source material. That is still an important part of adapting these works. Something like the Wheel of Time has just thrown out the source material almost completely. It, it the I, I am honestly shocked at how badly they followed the book, uh, the Eye of the World. I'm not even a big Wheel of Time fan, but I'm just shocked with how much they just threw out wholesale and wrote, rewrote for no reason. There's just no reason to stray so far from the source material. Um, now, of course, with, with the, the Rings of Power, the source material is found in, you know, Tolkien's many scribblings and writings and musings about Middle Earth and its history, like the Silmarillion, and, and um, it's not a straightforward story like the Lord of the Rings itself. So they obviously are going to have to make a lot, of, fill in a lot of blanks, create their own story out of these worlds. I'm just worried again, like watching this trailer, it's not just like the day they did the forced diversity, the tokenism or whatever, um, whatever, like it, it bothers me, but, but only because I feel like it's a part of a larger symptom, which is these show these showrunners and producers and writers just ignoring the source material and just making their own fan fiction instead. Um, what bothers me more about this is just sort of how it ends up just feeling very generic. This trailer feels like generic epic fantasy. It, you could take it, you could just take out the title card, take out the Lord of the Rings, and just slap Dungeons and Dragons on there, and no one would would know the difference. Um, it's just it just feels very much like ho hum flashy cgi you know elf catching the arrow in mid-flight like all the sort of gaudier less serious aspects of of 
Tolkien's work and how it's been adapted, um, which seems to have gotten worse over the years. I think I think the first trilogy was pretty faithful, minus some kind of big big issues I had with it. Um, but it was still a pretty faithful adaptation. I don't think we're ever going to see anything like that again. <laughs> um, the Hobbit was a monstrosity, a total total monstrosity. Um, most of the games have been pretty bastarded, like bastardized versions of Tolkien. Uh, the One Ring MMO is pretty good. Um, but really, I just, I don't know. This looks like generic, bland, uh, I don't know. It, it just feels like it's it's got a sort of, I don't know, almost a CW quality to it. Like all these young, attractive people. Um, like, I don't know. There's something kind of charming about hobbits and rangers and, and, and less so about like, I don't know. Just all these beautiful warrior people. I don't know. We don't. There's not enough story to go off of here. I don't know what this, what it's going to be about, really, or you know, in in any detailed way. And maybe I'm wrong. Maybe it will all be fine. It just it feels super generic to me. It feels like, hey, let's check off all the fantasy boxes, and then we'll check off all the diversity boxes, and we'll check off all the and and when when our committee is done polishing this this soulless but very glittery show that we throw all this money at. Hopefully people like it, but we don't actually know what fans like and we'll probably fuck it up. So anyways, um, I'm going to stop rambling. Uh, I actually already tried to make this video once, but I had technical difficulty with the microphone. And um, so I, I'm, I'm done talking about this issue now. So uh, let me know what you thought of the trailer and what your, what your feelings on the show are uh, in the comments. Thanks for watching. Peace.